evening, gang. It's Tuesday the 25th, 25th, <laughs> Tuesday the 25th of July 2017. A warm welcome along. It's an early evening show from us here at uh, United Kingdom's Hall, coming to you as usual live from the Mirable Studios in Royal Berkshire. And shock horror, boys and girls, I know the believers are going to be so, so disappointed. Poor little Justin Bieber is very tired. He's very tired. And it's, that's not me, incidentally. It's the chair. Listen, listen. I might need to get a new chair. How old is this one now? I think that's a few years old now. Excellent chair. Very comfortable, you know. It's like one of those secretary's chairs. Yes, indeed. Yes, Justin Bieber has unfortunately had to cancel his concerts. Here is the news from Billboard. Oh, yeah, not even in the Daily Mail today. In Billboard. Justin Bieber has cancelled the remainder of his purpose world tour. The singer announced on his website yesterday uh, the tour was being promoted by AEG Presents. Due to unforeseen circumstances, Justin Bieber will cancel the remainder of the purpose world tour concerts. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're not going to see that gorgeous little young thing prancing around on the stage, are we? With the trousers around his ankles and topless. Oh, he spends so much time at that gymnasium, doesn't he? He must do. The statement reads, Justin loves his fans and he's had so many of them. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Justin loves his fans and he hates <coughs> to disappoint them. He thanks his fans for the incredible experience of the Purpose World Tour over the last 18 months. Has he been touring for 18 months? No wonder he needs a break. It's tiring. It must be so tiring and awful living from hotel to hotel. You can only do it so much, can't you? Surely. I mean, it's not the same, but I used to work every night. I, d I did it for years, and you do get very tired. Very tired. I can't imagine. That must be awful. Just living in one hotel room after another one and another one. Putting your stuff in a bag. I mean, I don't know. I suppose they've got people to do it, you know. But you've got your personal stuff as well that you don't want anyone rifling through, do you? Like they do at the security department at the airports and all that. Rifling through your knickers. Don't you hate that, ladies? Oh, excuse me, madam, would you... Oh, here we go again. Could you open the bag, please, madam? Yeah, well, why can't they open it themselves? Ah, maybe because it's booby-trapped. The security staff at the airport might think that it is booby-trapped, and that's why they don't open it themselves, you know. It's bang! You don't want an ex explosion in Heathrow Airport, do you? So that, and, they don't, and, and they start rifling, dear! I mean, don't they worry if you've got dirty... Oh, no, I suppose they wear gloves, do they? I can't remember now. I think I was only rifled about once when I was about 20 years old, something like that. It was My case was rifled. Could you open your bag, please, sir? Open the bag. Nothing in there, dear. I've had some clothes. Where have you come from? Florida, please. Thank you very much. What did you do there? I went to see Mickey Mouse. Me, Mickey Mouse. It's the Mickey Mouse show. <laughs> they're, they're rifling. I think some of them are perverts. I'm sorry, ladies. I think some of them are perverts. I suggest... Next time you go away, count your knickers and your bras before you come through an airport. And then when you get to the hotel, count them again and see if the same amount are still there. I bet they're not. I bet they're not. Oh, yeah, that dirty old security man is prancing around in front of a webcam somewhere with your underwear on. Don't put your don't put your names in. People will see them when they watch those mucky nasty films on there. One pound fifty a minute. God's sake, man. Anyway, back to this um, back to this story here. He is grateful and honoured to... This is Justin Bieber. To have shared the experience with his cast and crew for 150 successful shows across six continents. Oh, it's not as many people as watch this show, dear. God, 150 shows in 18 months. How many shows have I done in that time? About 500, thank you very much. Come on, Justin, do try and keep up with me, dear. <coughs> I'm twice your age. Well, nearly three times, actually. Uh, Justin Bieber had 14 shows left on the tour, mostly stadium dates. He must be so... T he must be tired. The Sorry Singer. Sorry. Ah, ah, ah. See, I can do Justin Bieber songs. Ah, ah, ah. If you love yourself. La, 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 la. I like that one. I like that one. Can I, can I let you into a secret? You won't tell anyone, will you? 
I signed up to Justin Bieber's Instagram account. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell the Manilow girls, they go mad. I've signed up to Justin Bieber's Instagram account. Oh, there's some, there's some hot pictures on there, let me tell you. On Justin, all these top lips pictures on the tattoos and the rippling muscles. How does he do it like that? He must have implants or something. It can't be all hard work, dear. God's sake. Um, uh, his last show was going to be in London's Hyde Park. Uh, Cancelled, I'm afraid. That's a shame. But I would assume, I would assume that um, uh, he's very, very tired after doing all that work. It must be. Let's say hello to some of you who are here with us early tonight. Uh, Diane Z. Diane is always there, looking beautiful and glamorous as always. Good evening, Diane. Uh, Wendy's there. Good evening, Wendy. Joining us live tonight. I saw a little status update that you made a little bit of a mistake at work, didn't you? To someone on the telephone or something, I think you were, wasn't you, Wendy? Huh? Uh, I did see your status update there. Uh, hello to uh, Rod Brown. He's there tonight. Judy London. Greetings, Judy. Judy had her little birthday yesterday, didn't you, my love? Happy birthday to you for yesterday again. That's twice. No one gets it twice, Judy. You are special. You are special, yes. Jamie Clark's there. Good evening, uh, Jamie. Says, been listening, missing your shows for days. We can always catch the... Um, uh, it always stays up afterwards as a recording. <clears throat> the recording is exactly the same as, it, as, as the live show, except it's not live. It's exactly the same, word for word, minuscule picture by minute. You can count these. If you can count the flowers on here, Jamie, okay? Count the flowers on here right now while you're live, and then count them later while it's recorded. And you'll see it's exactly the same, lovey. Exactly the same. Uh, good morning to AD, who's uh, recovering from a bit of an incident, aren't you? Greetings, AD. Welcome to our little show. Can you do Justin Bieber, AD? AD comes to uh, our... I haven't seen him for some time now, but he used to come to our karaoke quite a lot. Uh, and uh, sing a very, very powerful voice. Sometimes I had to turn the microphone off. You were so powerful, dear. God's sake, man. Greetings to Chris Bedwell, photographer extraordinaire who said his only good song was written by Ed Sheeran. Was that Sorry? Uh, 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 is that, was that the song? Uh, 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 was it that one? <laughs> Hello to Andy Henley. And uh, Alan Davy is there as well. Good evening to you, boys and girls. AD likes the flow. Thank you very much. This was a present, actually. This was a present. From best mate Ron. Uh, I think from... Oh, where did he last go? Turkey. He's off again tomorrow. He's going to Cyprus. Let's see, prayer. Cyprus tomorrow. What's it like there? That's not one of those countries where they where they nick you and, and, and cut heads off, is it? Hope his head's not going to come back to me in a small box or something like that. <clears throat> very frightening. I'm very careful where I go on holiday. Incidentally, I've, ord I've ordered a couple of new shirts. The Ted Baker sale. There's a couple of big sales on at the moment. Designer sales at the moment. There's a Ted Baker sale at the moment. And a Ralph Lauren sale. And I ordered all these things uh, actually about 50% at uh, half price. Uh, a pair of trainers from Ralph Lauren, £42. And uh, two shirts, which are about £40 each, which is half price. Most of these times, uh, those shirts are like 90 quid, 100 quid. I would never pay £100 for a shirt. Well, for one shirt, are you serious? No, I don't think so. You know, I do buy their stuff, but always in the sale. I never, ever pay uh, a full price for anything. And they're quite thick as well. I've got quite a few shirts in the cupboard now, collected over the years. And they last and they last and they last. You know, a lot of this stuff, when you buy a shirt for like four quid, I don't know, from Primer, I don't think that's going to be there in 10 years' time. I've got shirts in the cupboard that are all 15, 20 years old, and you wouldn't know. Maybe a slight, a slight fading. A slight fading. Unlike Judy London, who will never fade. She will never fade. She says, I'll be coming to see you soon to sing a song. I do hope so, Judy. What will you sing, my darling? What will you sing? I think something from the sound. Oh, look, this, uh, talking to the sound of music. I was given this story last night by Johnny Key, who comes along to the karaoke in uh, Central Station. Almost every Monday and every Friday, he comes in there, he has a meal. Because you can have a meal in there as well. I do the karaoke at Central Station. Mondays, 8 till 11.30 with cheap drinks. And uh, Fridays, 8.30 to midnight. And they do meals in there as well. And a lot of people come in early, sort of about, I mean, I get there, uh, that, that's 8 o'clock on a Monday, 8.30 on a Friday. So I'm there generally about 45 minutes before we're due on. Because I like to be set up and all ready. Now, I'm generally ready 20, at least 20 minutes before I due to start. Because I, I can't be rushing around, Judy. Do you know what I mean? 
Not like some of these drag queens, dear. Oh, Christ. They come in. They rush in. Oh, give me two minutes. And they're on. How do you do that? Oh, no. I've got to be prepared. Cubs, be prepared. We will do our best. I was in the Cubs as well. And the Scouts. I did it all. Did it all. Not the Boys Brigade. Boys Brigade was sort of, you know... I mean, what were they, dear? I think they were trying to be... They weren't good enough to be Scouts. So they became Boys Brigade, dear. Boop, 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 boop. Yes, something like that. Anyway, so Johnny Key, uh, after his chips, gave me this yesterday. No sound of music. Look at this. Film distributors in South Korea decided that the sound of music starring Julie Andrews was too long. So they cut out all the songs. <laughs> How do, is this true? It played to packed houses without the help of Edelweiss. Oh, you've got to have Edelweiss on, haven't you? In the sound of music, dear. Edelweiss said, are we live? Oh, apparently we're live in Bracknell Bus Station. Is that where you are at the moment? Here, oh, Wayne, can you do us a favour? I went. I meant to get up there today to nick some more of the metros for me incontinent cat. I'm almost out of newspapers. Uh, those of you that are regular viewers will know I have a very highly incontinent cat. She's 18 years old and she don't hold it in at all anymore. And every morning and every time I come in from work, there's a load of newspaper to be picked up and chucked away again. Oh, the me I mean, I wouldn't even consider showing you that. You know, sometimes I take pictures of things. I say, oh, you know, and here's my hanging baskets. And I push a picture and up it comes on the screen. Oh, the technology in here is marvellous. But not the cat mess. Because, I mean, I'm telling you, it gets really messy. In fact, it's recently got a bit worse. Well, not only on the floor now, it ends up on the walls. So now I've had to put paper all over my devices downstairs. The, the fridge, the dishwasher, the freezer, the um, uh, washing machine, the back wall, the door. I've had to put paper over all that as well. Because somehow it gets up there. Now, how does it get up there? Does she turn around and fire it up on the wall? <laughs> I, I, I really wouldn't show you that because it's that bad sometimes. But that's what we have to do. But I've nearly run out of newspapers. Could you pop over to the train station, Wayne? Or send one of the uh, driving fellas or ladies over to the um, uh, train station to see if there's any metros left. Usually they're gone by that. Oh, i tell you what, Wayne. Can you tell me what time do the metros usually get there? Can you ask around for me? Then I can get up there early. I'm leaving it too late, you see. And I'm literally down to my last two days worth of metros. Which is a bit worrying, really. Isn't it? <clears throat> yes. By the way, thank you. Those of you, I noticed some of you are sharing the show onto your wall today. That's always very much appreciated. And it's very kind of you to do so. I never ask you to do that. But I know some of you do it. So I always like to thank you. Thank you for sharing the show uh, to your wall. Oh, 5 a.m. those papers get there. Today. Oh, it might be a bit too early for me, love. I mean, it was all right when I was going out the weekend to turn meals and getting in at 11 in the morning or something like that. Do you remember those days? I don't think you ever went to trade, did you, Wayne? He wasn't a trade boy. It was a nightclub that we all used to go to in uh, in Clerkenwell in central London. It used to open at half past three in the morning. Honestly, we used to dance until one o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> happy, happy times. I don't think I could do that now. I like to be in bed by one o'clock now. I absolutely do. So, so six by six a.m. at every station, the um, uh, the metros have been delivered. Oh, I don't think I'll be able to get there. Okay, Wayne's off. Go on, off you go, Campbell. Are you on the bus? Give us a wave as you come past, Wayne. I think you'll come past my house, don't you? On that little bus of yours. And no, and stop trying to get ladies' coats and things trapped in the door as you close them. That's very naughty. It's not funny. It's not funny. That's what Wayne does, I reckon. I think he, wait, he waits till, till the handbag, you know, the handbag over the shoulder, goes through the door, and he pushes the button so the door closes and the handbag gets stuck. And he drags. They have a competition at Bracknell Bus Station to see how far, um, uh, what, what can be the longest... Oh, is that, is that air? My cold air's not working there. Is it on? There we go. Um, to see how far they can drag ladies along the road. It's disgusting. It really is. Greetings to uh, Chris, who's watching at the William Hill booking office somewhere in London. So uh, uh, can people hear me, uh, Chris? Could, would you like me to wish them a very good evening to you on my worldwide famous television program? Would you like that, lovey? Shall I, shall I wish them hello? Do you want me to shout? Hello. Hello to everyone in the William Hill 
booking betting office. Place your bets now, please. And stop beating up the machines just because you've lost all the money. Come on. You know you're not going to win anything out of a machine ever. Never, ever. I bet you if you put £100 in today, you win £1,000. I bet you that would be gone by blooming Friday this week. You put it all back in again, don't they? No, walk away. Walk, walk, walk away. Yes. Oh, when he used to go to FF too, did you really? That's where I first started going. That was my favourite, FF. Oh, that was a wonderful place. Do you remember the laser? Ian Thrussell's with us. Look, Ian used to go to FF as well. Ian was one of the first people I ever went to um, turn meals with. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Yes, so hello to all the people in the William Hill booking office. Yes. Place your bets, please, and stop being nasty to poor little Chris, who's working hard, working hard to support your every needs. And when you run out of money, don't worry, my loveys, just go down the council and they rehouse you down there. Hopefully not in a uh, in in, in too, uh, too too dire situations. Yes. Uh, you, you met, uh, uh, oh, Duke's area manager is there. Well, this is what he does, Mr. Area Manager, Mr. or Mrs. Area Manager. This is what he does all day. He just sits there on the mobile phone watching crap chat shows like this one. That's all he does. I bet he always moans he hasn't got enough money, am I right? Does he ever turn in late to work by any chance? Does he ever smell like he's got alcohol on his breath? <laughs> you know him as well as I do then. That's right, yes. Mm. Anyway, so the sound of music. How can you have the sound of music with that Edelweiss? Funny people in South Korea cutting out all the songs... Because it was too long. Edelweiss, Edelweiss, bless my homeland forever. Do you like that? Oh, it's nice, isn't it, Edelweiss? I have been to Slimming World today. I'll tell you later. I'm coming to that in a minute, OK? So, as I say, it's a lovely evening outside. The cat's outside. Uh, she's been walking around. Actually, she's been outside since about 10 o'clock this morning. She seems <clears throat> she seems to be happier sitting in the garden and walking around. She, does, she walks around in circles, like round and round she goes. She does seem to be happier in the garden rather than stuck in that little area of the kitchen. So I, I put her out there as much as I can. Uh, checking on the weather first. So to, to, you know, obviously, you don't want to have her out there when it's raining because I don't think she'd get up and try and find somewhere to, to hide. Probably wouldn't even realise it was raining. But also if it's too hot. <clears throat> because she has got stuck in the sun before, accidentally, and I've gone out there an hour later, and she's literally laying on the floor <laughs> where she's overheated, so I've got to be very careful of that as well. But generally, I put her out in there, outside in the garden as much as possible, and she's been out there since 10 o'clock this morning, quite happy, just sitting on her patch of glass. Now and again, she gets up, walks around in circles for half an hour, and then goes back to sleep again. <laughs> Bless her heart. Dear me. Uh, great karaoke last night. It was really good last night in the, um, uh, at the um, at uh, Central Haitian Central Station. You know, Mary wasn't there. Mary's away at the moment on holiday. She is in Argentina. Don't mention the Falklands. Whatever you do, dear. Oh, they go mad, dear. Don't mention the Falklands. Whatever you do, God's sake, woman. Oh, don't cry for me, Argentina. Well, we didn't. <laughs> We didn't, did we? So that was nice. Uh, Ray Reynolds came in last night. Ray Reynolds, I spoke to him this afternoon on the phone. He's got his new diary. Yes, he's got his new diary already. He's got bookings. Ray Reynolds plays the ukulele and he's damn good at it. Damn good. He's like um, a bit like myself, I suppose, an old-fashioned entertainer. You know, you won't hear me swear or or do anything that I... Th I, 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 I never, ever go out to offend anyone. I would never want to do that. Sometimes people are offended because they've looked to be offended. You'll know exactly what I mean, Judy. They seek to be offended. Uh, probably some people are offended at the moment by this new shirt. Well, turn it off then. Not interested. Turn it off. But anyway, Ray Reynolds is like an old-time entertainer, and he's, he's fantastic. He's really fantastic. I, I kind of think <clears throat> Ray Reynolds is like... Um, 30 years too late, if you see what I mean. If he was doing that when George Formby was you know, at George Formby's time, I think he would have been a big time star, Rain. I really do. If I, and I think, actually, if I was doing this, what I do now in the 70s, I think I might have got somewhere as well. 
might have got some of it, doesn't matter, you know, because we're all doing our thing. He goes around pubs and plays guitar, uh, uh, ukulele and loves what he does. I sit here and love what I do, chatting to you. You know, we love it. Anyway, he's brought me in. Good evening to Alan Russell. Greetings, Alan. Welcome to our, our, our early evening show. I'm surprised so many of you are there today. I thought, oh, well, EastEnders and Coronation Street and Emmerdale and all that old crap will be on the telly. There won't be anyone there, but you are. Surprise, surprise. Da -da 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 surprise, surprise. Oh, Judy lives in Essex. Do you really, darling? I didn't know that. Are you near Basildon? I did colours in Basildon. I did a little bit of DJing there for a while. I hated that place. Oh, I hated it. It was just, and I, I can't tell you what it was either. I just didn't didn't get on there. So I did six gigs and then I, then I resigned. I didn't like that one at all. Greetings to Paul Dow, who's there today. Greetings, Paul Dow. Anyway, Ray Reynolds. Oh, hang on. No soaps on in this house. Good. Buckhurst Steel. Oh, uh, one of the other people lives in Buckhurst Steel. here. I'll tell you who it is in a minute. Hang on a minute. I think it's Chris. It's Chris. I thought I saw Chris with us as well. He might have gone by now, but uh, Chris lives in Buckhurst Hill. That's a bit posh there, isn't it, Judy? What are you doing there, love? I just imagined you as a council housing estate girl. Are you not? You're in Buckhurst Hill? What, private accommodation? Surely not, dear. On your wages? Very surprised. Anyway, so, r hello, Carla. Carla Nash is there. I used to work with her at Blue Shears. Wonderful lady. And looking very fit. She's doing the Slimming World as well. I've been a Slimming World today. I'll tell you what I lost in a minute. But Ray Reynolds has purchased me two more wonderful gifts. This is what he got me a couple of weeks ago. Look at this. You'll love this. Judy, you'll know what this is. If you're of an age, you'll know this. He got me that, right? The Blue Peter 6th Book Annual. Oh, yes. 1963, I think this was. Something like that. 1965, maybe. And there's no writing in it. I used to have this as a boy. And a lot of stuff got chucked out, obviously. You know, when my mum died, everything went into a skip, really. No, nothing was gone through, unfortunately. That's what you do. Uh, and I mentioned, I mentioned on the show, after I showed everyone that, that I also had, at some point, the one with John Noakes and Shep on it. Well, Ray Reynolds has only gone out and bought this one as well. Look at this! It's John Noakes, who we sadly lost a few months ago, didn't we? He had a... Uh, Alzheimer's um, uh, uh, a disease. Is it, is it is a disease, isn't it? Alzheimer's disease. John Noakes was the best Blue Peter presenter. Not like them, not like them now. Have you ever watched it recently? Oh, but it's ghastly. Ghastly. They, they talk down to you. Hello and welcome to Blue Peter. Go away. Go away. No one is that happy. <laughs> but he was great. And, and, and I'm so pleased to have got these. He's bought me this one. Um, which he found, I think off, I don't know, it might have been eBay or something like that. And there's, there's Valerie Singleton. It's Val, the Blue Peter Babe. Oh, yes. Where did she end up? Was it Babe Station she went on to in the end or something like that? <laughs> no, I think she went, she was very intelligent. She went on the money programme, didn't she? And uh, <clears throat> another one as well. I don't think I have that that one. That, that's who took over from Valerie Singleton. That's Leslie Judd. I don't know what she's doing now. Peter Purvis and there's John Noakes again. He was, uh, I think John Noakes was the longest one on there, wasn't he? So that was really, really kind. Wonderful mementos of my childhood. And we, we all like that, don't we? Don't you sometimes go through your cupboard and pull out that old teddy bear? I wish I had my old teddy bears. They would have been in pieces by a flea bitten things they were, dear. <laughs> but we loved our teddies, didn't we? We absolutely loved our teddies. Mm, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Judy London still has the Blue Peter badge. Oh, I've got one somewhere. I don't know where it is. I'd have to turn the house upside down to find it. But I I, um, I, I got a Blue Peter badge. I can't remember how old I was. But I sent in... I, I actually copied out of a book. It was a, it was a, 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 a design for an aneometer, a wind measuring device. And it was basically some, I think, a little pen or something like that with straws and half a <clears throat> half a ping pong balls, for two of those, cut in half, and it would go round in the wind. And I sent that in, and they sent me a blue Peter badge. A blue blue Peter badge, thank you very much. Did you get the gold one? Didn't get the gold one, did you? Carla, uh, Cara and I were just after a Slimming World update. I'll give you a Slimming World update. <clears throat> I will be giving you a Slimming World update very, very shortly. Stand tuned on this programme. It's coming soon. So that was Ray. Uh, the drive-in, drive-in and out of London at the moment is a little easier now that we've got the school on. I never quite understand that. 
The schools finish at like 3.15 in the afternoon. So why does that affect me going to work at like 6, 6.30 at night? I can't work that out. But it is easier now, so I should have some reasonable journeys in and out of London uh, at least until September. Then it gets busier again. In November, it goes mad. It's it's terrible, terrible driving in uh, into London during November and December. It's really bad. That's the worst time. And then straight after Christmas, it gets very easy again. Uh, until about Easter, and then it kind of builds up a little bit more again. So looking forward to that. Um, I watered all my hanging baskets this morning. I caught a bloody squirrel in my hanging basket, uh, uh, hanging, out, uh, hanging on the tree the other morning. Don't worry, I've got my water jet. Psst, and the thing run back up the tree again. Aren't they ugly things, squirrels? I hate them. They dig all your bulbs up and eat you. They're looking for nuts, dear. Looking for nuts. Looking for, I wonder sometimes if it's better to put out a bowl of nuts or something like that. That would put the squirrel off digging in my hanging baskets, wouldn't it? Huh? So, jumped on my bike, uh, went to Slimming World, and my cycle to Slimming World today was a lot better than it was to church on Sunday when I got bitten by a dog. Blooming dog. And usual thing, it's all right, mate, he won't bite, they don't bite. Yes, he did, well, what did he just do? He just bit my leg. Anyway, unfortunately, the skin was not broken. Dog's probably dead now anyway, now it's bit me. <laughs> Good. Shouldn't go around buying, buying people. So I've gone in Slimming World. I've added my card in. Oh, there was a lot of um, lot of queuing, queuing in there today. So I just sat down and I talked to my friend from Canada. I've made a lot of friends in Slimming World. Well, acquaintances, you know. I've made a lot of acquaintances now in Slimming World. They're lovely. I was the only bloke there today. Now and again, she says, and now, ladies, oh, I'm sorry. And she kept calling me Charlie today for some reason. Linda. Linda, the lovely lady in charge of Slimming World Woke. She always dresses beautifully. She has her hair all done and all that. It's a full-time job, you know. We only see her for like an hour and a half, don't we, you know? But then she has to order all this stuff in, the little chocolate bars and that things. She had a display on the table this morning. They had Slimming World chocolate bars, which are three sins for one of these. You can, and you can have two of those in a day. Three sins you can have, a little Slimming World chocolate bar. There's other chocolate bars. She had, a, uh, I don't know, some different make things. And it was a bounty. She picked it up. She said, how many, how many sins do you think there are in the bounty one? And they're all like, oh, about six, seven, five... And she's gone, 16, and everyone, and you hear the breath, <gasps> like that. <gasps> I love it in there. It's hilarious and funny at the same, and but not funny at the same time. Just remember, you know, when they, sometimes they say something like that, 16 sins, <gasps> and uh, everyone takes a draw, intake and breath, shock, horror, a bounty is 16 sins. Watch out, everyone. Goodbye, bounties. <clears throat> Those little Slimming World chocolate bars. I don't think I've... Oh, I have got one here. Look, here's one. There they are. You get these, right? Now, <laughs> if you like chocolate, you'll think to yourself, this isn't very big. There it is. This is an orange one. I've got two different types here. I've got a, a Rocky Road one, which is like marshmallows on top, that sort of thing. You must have had these. Have, have you had these, um, uh, Carla and Cara? Yeah, and that, that's the Rocky Road one there. And that's the orange one. Orange, Rocky Road. That one's got marshmallows. That's an orangey taste. That's like a, I think it's a coconutty one. And they're very nice. They do look a bit small, don't they? I mean, what can I measure this up against? Uh, uh, let's take a big pen. There you go. So they're not massive. <coughs> and if you're used to stuffing your face with great big bars of chocolate, like my sister does, you know... <coughs> Oh, my God, she can get through se several boxes of chocolates in an hour. I used to do the same. I used to go and buy that big galaxy bar. And Mary, non-Irish Mary from Ireland, used to bring me in these big bars of galaxy chocolate. And I could polish that off in a couple of minutes. Oh, I used to love it. <coughs> Once you've started, stopped eating the chocolate in such quantities, you have a small one like that sometimes on the car to work, in the car to work, and you savour, oh, Every bite. And they're very delicious. And they're not 16 sins. <gasps> like the bounty ones. So I walked past the chocolate sir, and then it came to weigh in time. So I handed me a little card in. She put it on a machine. Went across there and bingo. 
This week I have lost ping, one and a half pounds. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much. One and a half pounds down, which is, if you remember last week, last week for some reason I put on a pound and a half. This week I've lost the pound and a half. Don't know why I put it on. That happens sometimes. Okay, I am now going to tell you my total weight loss so far. Since starting Slimming World, I've had seven weigh-ins now. I think it's... Oh, hang on. Has someone just tried to call in? I haven't said the... Um, oh, no. No one's tried to call in. There we are. I haven't opened the phone line yet, have I? You know, I'll open it in a minute if you want a, if you want a bit, little bit of a chat. Um, yes, I've been going now for um, uh, seven weeks. I think it's week seven. And so far, I have lost one stone and half a pound or one stone and one pound <clears throat> i'm now 12 i'm now 12 stone 13 13 stone 13 and a half yes i've lost one stone and one pound da, 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 da. that's in seven weeks thank you very much and now i have done some rough calculations for those of our american friends who are watching because this program is very big in america here they had to move The Tonight Show with Jay Leno to a later time to accommodate my programme. That's what's happened in America, dear. I've taken the states by storms. You may, if you're on holiday in America and you're going in shops, and you will notice that everything goes quiet about, you know, at certain times during the day. It's when my show's on. And it's being played in all the hotels. If you're in a hotel room and my show comes on, you could be sitting there watching a family film, you know, in the hotel. Or a bit of one of those dodgy films that you pay extra for. You be, and suddenly my face comes on. Because automatically the hotels have got some sort of device that switched me on to all the tellies in the hotel. Isn't that wonderful for the people there to be entertained by little old me? It really is. So, here's my conversions. Um, so, I am now... I think I'm 168 pounds in American... And for those of you with foreign tongue, I am now 76. Oh, no, hang on a minute. Oh, no, it's wrong, isn't it? No, I want to be, I want to be 12 stone. So I've got 13 pounds to go. Yep, 13 pounds to go. I want to be 12 stone. I, I want to be, I think this is right, 168 pounds. Is that correct? Is 12 stone 168 pounds, which is 76 kilos. So I have only six kilos to go to reach my required weight. The weight that I want to be. Da, 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 da. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Mark. Alan says his favourite chocolate bar is a star bar. Ooh, better look that up for you, Alan. Let me see how... Mind you, Alan's as thin as a rake anyway. And you managed to say so thin, Alan. Let's just check out a star bar. I have my Slimming World app. One moment, please. Star bar. Right, hang on a minute. Just a minute, just a minute. Food search. Star bar. How many sins in a star bar? You're allowed 20 sins a day if you're a man, 15 if you're a lady. All right. Come on. And some of you girls going to moan now, some of the women's liberation movement. Oh, well, that's discrimination against women. Oh, shut up. Stop moaning. Star bar. One moment, please. Star bar coming up now. Oh, hang on. Sit, oh no, it doesn't say. Don't say what a star bar is. It says, um, I don't know, it doesn't say star bar. Is that a bit like a Mars bar? Star, I don't know what a star bar is. Maybe it's one word. Just a minute. <coughs> star bar. Is that going to make any difference? Star bar. Cabra star bar. Ooh, 12 and a half sins. Oh, see, so you can only have two of those in a day. That's it. You can have nothing else to eat other than a star bar. Two star bars. I wonder what a Mars bar is. Hang on. Mars. Because I used to like Mars bars. They're really sticky on the teeth, aren't they? Christ, that pulls your fillings out, doesn't it? Mars bar. One minute. One minute. Mars bar. 39 gram bar. Oh, it's only nine sins. 39. Oh, I thought that would be more than that. That's not bad, is it? So a bounty is more than that, you see. Bounty. That's my tea gone, so I won't be here much longer. 
Peanuts. He wants to know what peanuts now. I don't know what peanuts are. Peanuts. Golden wonder. They're jungle fresh. Da -da 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 you like peanuts, don't you? So there we are. That's my um. <clears throat> that's my weight loss this week. So I'm quite pleased about that. Uh, then I went on to a haircut. I had my haircut this morning. No one's noticed, have they? No one has come on and said, oh, that's really nice hair today, Chris, is it? No one. No one. I bet it's only £10 on a Tuesday. Well, if you include the tip, it's £10 and 5 pence. So £10 and 5 pence on the, uh, on the haircut. Cycled home, had a bit of lunch. And I was going to go out then, uh, you see, to town to get some copies of... Um, of the uh, of the newspaper to put down for the cat outside the train station, but by then I'm looking at the watch and I think they're all going to be gone now. So I was going to do that, and um, uh, I was also going to go into Thomas Cook. I'll tell you why I want to go into Thomas, Thomas Cook. Let's open a phone line. Shall I open a phone line now? One moment. There you go. Phone line open. If you want to call, you don't have to call in. We're never desperate for calls here. I can talk for hours and hours and not have anyone talking to me at the other end. Don't worry if you don't want to call in. Doesn't matter. But there you are. If you feel the need to call in at some point, perhaps something I've said or something else you want to ask, there's the phone number up there. 020 3477 Please only call in if you're with us live. If you're watching a recording of the show, you won't get through. Is that the time where you are now? Five, five to eight? On Tuesday, the 25th of July, 2017, if that is the time where you are now, you are with us live. If it's another time where you are now, assuming you're in the UK, then uh, then you're watching a recording, so you won't be able to call in, but you can if you want. So I was going to go to Thomas Cook, because... Uh, oh, greetings, Vectis. Vectis is there on the Isle of Wight. Welcome along. Welcome along. Let's have a look. Uh, use cat scan. Uh, no, she doesn't. She won't use the cat tray. She doesn't use the cat tray at all, unfortunately. It's a waste of time putting the cat tray down anymore. She don't use it. She just goes on the floor whenever. I don't think she... I think it comes out when she's asleep as well. It's that bad now, Judy. And I know what you're going to say, but please don't. People are telling me this all the time. I know, I know, I know. <clears throat> I know. We can't be doing that yet. Vectis wants to know, are you on the new series of Coach Trip with Brenda Bob? <laughs> no, I will not go on Coach Trip. Oh, aren't they ghastly, those people? Tearing each other apart on the telly. Sometimes there's nearly fights, isn't there? I wouldn't, why would you want to go on holiday? With, I can't imagine being stuck on a, um, on a coach with a load of other people that you don't even know. Oh, I don't like that. Don't like that at all. Oh, sorry, I've missed some of your messages there. Hello to Joey. Uh, greetings, Joey. Welcome to the show. And Mark's there as well. Morning, Mark. You, uh, good night last night, Mark. Hope you're hope you're looking after your spider plants that I bought you. I've got one more for you, for your mum. Uh, you let me know when you're down and I'll uh, bring that in for you, OK? Wendy says, yes, 12 stone is £168. So that's what I want to get to, OK? Um, Vectis. Uh, we've done, done that one. What happened? You went silent. Oh, sorry, I pushed my button. If I push my button like this, I can go silent. And you can't hear me, can you? See? I, I usually push the button if I want to cough or make a horrible noise that I don't want you to hear, you see. We all do it. We all do it. Even the newsreaders. Even uh, 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 Moira Stewart used to do it as well. <clears throat> did you never see her sniffing? But you never heard it, did you? No. <laughs> Thank you. Are you going away this summer? No, I'm just coming to that. I'm going to my sister's at some point. Yes, Alan. Uh, just for a couple of days, sometime in September. Uh, I also, what I want to do, I was going to go to Thomas Cook as well as collect these newspapers today, but I didn't manage to get down there. What I want to do is hire a cottage or a bungalow or a house or something like that for a week. And I want it to be isolated. When I say isolated, I don't mean so that I can't get somewhere. I don't want to be, you know, on an island surrounded by water and I can't get out and no one can get in. No, I want it to be completely on its own where I'm not around people at all anywhere. So I'm looking for that. <clears throat> and I typed in um, uh, last night, actually, while I was at work, I had a quick look while I was at work, secluded cottages. And they all come out, but they're all like on someone's farm or attached to another house. So that's not secluded to me. A secluded cottage or an isolated cottage is somewhere in the middle of nowhere, on its own. You're unlikely to see anyone. And I want to do that for a week. I would like to do that for a week just to see what it's like. See what it's like to ha perhaps live as a... Uh, they're called hermits, aren't they? Hermits. Women and men that decide to live on their own. In fact, um, funnily enough, I, I saw... 
a story just as it was about the start um, of the show tonight. <clears throat> if I can find it again. Here we are. There's there's a little story in the mail today. A woman living on a remote island off the coast of Canada, devoid of human life, could certainly give Robinson Crusoe a run for his money. This lady, who's 67 now, has spent more than 40 years living on Sable Island, a large, smile-shaped sandbar measuring around 26 miles long. The only other residents on the uh, land are 400 horses, 300,000 grey seals and 350 species of birds. Talking to Mail Online Travel, Lucas, who is revered for her work as a naturalist, reveals that she has adapted to island life and never gets lonely. She says her essential survival tools include a jotter pad so she can take notes, binoculars to observe the wildlife on the sandy shores. Sometimes there are some rather odd things she spots through her lenses, however, with a fake leg being one of the more bizarre things that have surfaced on shore. <laughs> Imagine that going down to the beach and finding someone's leg. Oh, dear. <clears throat> the sister's a scientist, and she was from Halifax, uh, here in the UK, Yorkshire. First visited the island as a 21-year-old in 1971, while studying uh, goldsmithing. I squawked and squawked. I wanted to come so bad, I originally came out here for the horses. Sable Island, which is only accessible by boat or charter plane, is home to hundreds of wild horses, which are completely unmanaged. It's believed that the animals arrived on the island in the 18th century to help with agricultural work when a settlement was attempted. And later they were recruited to help man a life-staving uh, station. It's shrouded in fog for around 125 days of the year and it is a notorious shipping ha hazard. Now, so, you know, and I, I, I would like to... She's a very private person, obviously. Um, <clears throat> I don't know where she gets her food from and stuff like that. I mean, perhaps she has it delivered or something like that. Um, but, um, yes, and I, I think I would like to just try something like that where you where you can be on your own, away from everyone and, 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 and buildings and things like that. And I would like to try that. So I was going to go down to Thomas Cook today uh, just to see if I could find somewhere. Because they're really good in there. Now, I don't go along with all this going online and finding your holiday. And it's so much easier just... And I don't understand why people want to muck about online I, I understand it's cheaper online to do everything yourself and all that but when you get into trouble there's no one to sort out the mess you've got to sort it out yourself so generally when i go on holiday i just walk into thomas scott and say hello i'd like to go to israel in september um i want this sort of flight cheap hotel will do what can you do and then for an hour sometimes they will sit down there at their computer typing away making the suggestions because they know they know. And I think they're brilliant at their job. And I don't understand why people don't go into these travel agents anymore. You, you're far happier to sit there typing away on your keyboard. And what about you, you've seen these stories in the newspapers of people that book villas in, I don't know, Spain, America, wherever. And they get there and the villa doesn't exist. <coughs> I saw a story only the other day. Some bloke paid £3,000 for his family. They got on the plane, got there. There's no villa didn't exist and they have to come back again terrible oh, I'd rather go in there anyway I did have a look online yesterday I think I typed in I think it was sky cottages or cottages to rent or something like that and as I say a lot of places came up but they all seemed to be that they weren't isolated at all presumably I mean somewhere like the Isle of Skye but that's a long way to go <clears throat> right up the top in Scotland. I mean, it's a very, very long way to go. I know mean, if there's someone nearer. I mean, ideally, Devon. Devon or or even the Lake District would be quite far. Even Lincolnshire, actually. Even Lincolnshire. You know, you know I like the caravan holidays as well. But there's a lot of people around you in a caravan holiday. Much that I love them. So I'm looking for something that's really quite isolated. Although, I want to be able to drum, jump, jump in my car and... And get to the shops or, or or something, you know, if I need to. Something like that. So, uh, interesting. I don't know if any of you have ever done something like that. Been a bit isolated. I'm going to be completely isolated for about a week and see how I get on with that. 
Uh, Vectis says you could rent my shed in Upper Ventnor. No one goes there. What, not even you? Have you got a man shed? Is it a little man cave? Eh? Where you got all your bits and pieces. You could, you could start a radio station there. Here, Vectis, do you read at all? I've got a great book that you would like. I don't know if you remember me talking about it about six months ago. Uh, about a boy who sets up a radio station in his shed. And it's a, I think, I, do you, if you don't read, then, then, then fair enough. You know, not everyone reads, do they? Can't be bothered. I never used to read until I picked up this book. I loved it. I think you might like that. Do you read at all? Alan loves Lincolnshire, especially Skegness. Oh, not Skegness. God's sake. That's the worst resort ever, isn't it? Notice I've taken down the Skegness picture now that uh, Ray Reynolds bought in. As one of his gifts, I nearly shung, shoved that one straight up where the sun don't shine, dear. A picture of Skegness on my back wall. And I forgot it was up there. It's been up there for weeks, isn't it? Ghastly place, dear. <clears throat> and those donkeys look so sad. Not surprised. Seeing all those fat people coming running towards them like that. I don't think they have Slimmer's World in Skegness. Definitely not. Linda, would, for Linda from Slimmer's World down, she would fall to pieces if she saw some of the people up there. There was like, well, there's one lady actually this morning. She's, uh, and she says, that. And what happens, you see, once they've done, once you've had the weigh-in, and then, then we have the group discussion, which is always a bit of a laugh. We, I love it. I sit there and, and Linda goes around and says, oh, hello, um, so Maisie. Hello, Maisie. So this week, you've had a good week. So far, you've lost three stone, five pounds altogether. And we all clap. And this week, you're down two pounds. And everyone claps and all that. And it goes around. And then, and then sometimes, <laughs> no one is judged. Now, remember that. If you ever want to go to Slimming World, probably Weight Watchers is exactly the same. No one is judged. If you put on a pound, no one says, oh, you fat git. That doesn't happen. Okay? Doesn't happen ever. <clears throat> and then she went to one lady. And says, um, oh, we haven't seen you for a couple. Oh, she says, no, I've been on holiday for a couple of weeks. I said, oh, yes. And uh, this week, oh, you've put on four pounds. And everyone, ooh, like that. <laughs> and she, she, But it didn't bother her, you know. And so it shouldn't, because sometimes you can go up a bit. It shouldn't bother you. And she said, oh, I think she was on a cruise or something like that. She said, and you had the meal. And then these cakes come out and I couldn't stop myself. And I thought, well, I can see that, love. Dear me. Dear me. So that was good. That was fantastic. Let's have a look. Um, Jerry, what about Pontins holidays? No, no, Pontins, there's loads of people around, Jerry. I want to be on my own, isolated from everyone. No one around. Me on my own. That's what I'm looking for, a holiday like that. But I don't want to have to go 200 miles up to the Highlands of Scotland uh, at the moment. Although it's a beautiful place. You know, beautiful, beautiful place, the Highlands of Scotland. Uh, let me see. Have I told you everything? Uh, so I didn't get didn't get to Thomas Cook or to get my newspapers, but I wanted some shopping. So I popped over to Audi, and honestly, great big blooming bag of shopping for like six pound ninety, bananas and strawberries. I have to say, I think the strawberries in there. I've, I've got to say that the Audi strawberries do not last as long as the Waitrose ones. Absolutely not. All the Sainsbury's ones, you've got to eat them within two days, and then they go all manky. Oh, aren't they horrible? Manky strawberries. I don't like those. Do you find the pips? I always seem to get a pip or two stuck in my teeth somewhere when I'm eating strawberries. Does that happen to you as well? Oh, it's so annoying, isn't it? And you're like, oh, oh, I can't get that. And you get a piece of paper and like, oh, the fivers are good, though. <coughs> the new five pound notes, the plastic ones, they're quite good as toothpicks, aren't they? But do remember, if you're going to use one as a toothpick, someone may have done that before you. OK? <laughs> you don't know, do you? And you've got that fiver there. How do you know? You know, someone might have just wiped their bottom and then picked up a, a fiver and put it back in there. Oh no, dear! Be very careful. Don't use fivers. That was a bad idea of mine. I hope no one switched off at that point and now is going to use a fiver to pick out bits of food from their teeth because they are quite good. The tenors were no good because oh, we're getting new tenors, aren't we? What's up? What's the picture? Is it a picture of me on the back of the tenors as an English rose or something like that? <laughs> Aren't I terrible? Now, uh, can can someone... I think I've still got this. Let me see if this picture's here. I was looking for a footballer, okay? Who is this footballer, please? Is this the one? There he is. 
Oh, and it's gorgeous. I showed you a picture of this one the other day, and I've decided that this is the man I want to marry. And as he pushes his little bum out like that, look at him, lifting that big old piece of metal or whatever it is, dear. What is he doing? Who is that footballer? I need more pictures of him on my Facebook wall. Please, does anyone know? One of the fellas I know that. Vectis, do you know who that is? That footballer? Or um, Alan might know. Are you a football man, Alan? I'll tell you what, Mark Cording might know. I don't know if he's still with us. Mark Cording. Who is that footballer? We need names, please. Names. I need to know who that footballer is, please. If you know, please put the name up there. Then I can find out. Because we've been searching and searching. I've no idea who it is. Cristiano Ronaldo. It's a bit old now. I'm sorry, darling. Move aside. Let's see someone a bit younger, love. You're probably thinking that as you're watching this programme at the same time, aren't you, really? Now, uh, very important. If you've got an iPhone, there's an iOS update. Do it. Otherwise, evil people could... could 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 um could look into your iPhone and steal your private information. Yes. And we don't want anyone having my phone number, thank you very much. I've had stalkers before and have a blooming nightmare. They really are. Oh, the phone. Uh, that's serious. I have had stalkers before. Oh, it's frightening. Somehow they get hold of your phone number and they keep ringing it. And they ring it and they ring it and they ring it and they get on my blooming nerves, stalkers. Dear me, so please don't do that. Greetings to uh, Ray Reynolds, who joins us a little bit later today. Welcome, Ray. I'm sorry that you, you couldn't be bothered to be with us when we started the show almost an hour ago now, dear. But not to worry, you know, we're not going to hold that against us. So that's it. Um, ordered. That's the iOS update that's done. Right. Now, what have we got today? Uh, some lovely stories provided by uh, the wonderful Johnny Key. Look at this. A Texas man has been rescued. Yes, uh, a man got locked inside an ATM room. Apparently, they have rooms in America. Do they have those here? Because I never, you see, I never take money out of a cash machine. Never. I always go into the bank. Actually, I, ne I don't usually take money out of the bank. I, I, sometimes I get paid in cash and I use that. But I pay money in. But uh, somewhere, uh, a Texas, in Texas, they have rooms where you go in. A man had got locked inside an ATM room, slipped help me notes for a receipt slot to be rescued. <laughs> the contractor was doing routine maintenance in the Bank of America branch in Corpus Christi, Texas. Texas. Yeehaw! That's where Dallas is, isn't it? Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. I love Dallas. When the door accidentally closed behind him on a Wednesday afternoon. According to local police, he was ch changing an electronic lock inside the room that connected to the machine, but had left his phone inside the truck. And he put a note here. Please help, I'm stuck here and I don't have my phone. Please, my, call my boss, look. <laughs> He's shoving those out of the receipt. <laughs> I would have stayed in there and collected all the, all the money, wouldn't you? Uh, senior officer Richard Olden told local news agency that when people stopped to withdraw cash, the worker decided to slip out SOS notes. <laughs> Several passers-by took it as a joke. <laughs> Until one customer eventually realised what was going on and the police and the contractor's supervisor arrived. How awful. The police kicked the door down to rescue the man. Well, that's not much good, is it, then? So this little room in the bank, you can easily kick the door down. Well, that's a waste of time then, isn't it? Having that door. Dear me. Everybody's OK, but you never see that. It's crazy. Look at that. A similar incident occurred in 2014. Oh, gosh. Uh, Vectis likes the shirt. Where did you get it? Ray, uh, uh, my friend uh, Ronnie bought me this when he was last on holiday. I've ordered two more shirts, incidentally. Two more shirts in the sale last night. We couldn't work out what collar size I was, so I've ordered 16. Have I got a tape measure in here? No, I haven't got one in here either. So I have no idea what size I was, so I've ordered 16 at a guess. And hopefully they will be arriving forthwith, and I will expose the new shirts in on my little body for you as soon as they arrive. Don't worry about that, OK? I shall expose... Hang on, let me turn that off a minute. There we are. I shall, I shall wear the shirt, shirts on the show as soon as they arrive. Don't worry. Um, greetings to Callum. Hello, Callum. He had a bit of good news the other day. Congratulations, Callum, on your bit of good news there. Now, what else have we got here? Oh, it's nearly time to go, isn't it? Look at the time. We've done an hour already. Gosh, that's gone very quickly now. What is it? Um, 
Ah, oh, yes, here we go. So this is in the Daily Mail as well uh, tonight. Look at this. Oh, oh, hang on a minute. Press escape. What have I done there? There we are. Now, I never understand people who go to places like Orton Towers, Thorpe Park, all those places, and they go on roller coasters. Why, oh, why do you want to go on something uh, where you think you are going to die? Why do you do that? But then even more stranger than that is when it all goes wrong, why do they complain? Story. Terrified thrill seekers. Ah! As young as 12 were today escorted off the Oblivion ride at Alton Towers. After it came to a clunking halt 180 feet in the air. Isn't that part of the fun? Don't you want that to happen? Is that not why you go on it? To think that you're about to die. Maybe it was something to do with the fact that it was less than 100 yards away from the Smiler roller coaster where the two teenage girls each lost a leg. Terrible. Do you remember that? That was about last year. Was it last year sometime? Terrible. But nevertheless, going back onto it, rescue scarf staff climbed the right. Uh, which opened in March 1998 and put harnesses on as many as 16 terrified passengers who were trapped in their seats before escorting them down to the ground. Well, why did you go on there? Yeah, that's why they go on there, to get those thrills, isn't it? To be absolutely scared and petrified to death. That's why they go on it. So why do they complain afterwards when it's got stuck? I would be charging them more, wouldn't you? Charge them more for going on the damn thing. It got stuck. Yeah, but we were really frightened. Oh, were you? Oh, well, that's another £25, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> you don't go on those, do you? All don't, no, I do not go on roller coasters. Absolutely not. Although the way my mate drives sometimes, it's like a roller coaster. Oh, God. It's so fast all the time. Fast, fast, fast. He really is. All right, then. Um, I think we're done today, aren't we? That'll do for our little show today. It's time for our birthday celebrations now. I, I always know a lot of people leave as soon as I say birthdays. You don't stay for the birthdays, I know that. So um, if you're about to leave, goodbye. Or if you're going to stay for the birthdays, here they come. Lots of birthdays today. Bethany Edge. Happy birthday to the lovely Bethany Edge today. Uh, to Mark Clare is 42 years old today. I've known you for so long, haven't I, Mark? Happy birthday to Mark. To Robert Highland, lovely Robert, 33 years old today. James Kennedy, happy birthday, sir. Uh, to Big Razor Sis, 47 years old today. Still very young, my darling. Happy birthday to Mark Tidy, 48 years old today. Kelly Marie. Kelly Marie, you lovely creature. I haven't seen you for a while. She used to come to the Hammersmith Belushi. She's a wonderful girl and a wonderful voice as well. Happy birthday to you, uh, Keely. All right. Did I say Kelly? Sorry. Keely. Keely. Happy birthday, Keely. Uh, Rogero Eduardo who was one of my fellow DJs at Belushi's in Hammersmith. He did the Fridays and the Thursdays, I think, and I did the Saturdays uh, DJing and karaoke on Mondays there. And uh, he, he was there as well with me at, uh, at the time. It's a few years ago now. Happy birthday, uh, Rog. Roger. We used to call him Roger. Rogerio. Roger. Happy birthday. Are you still DJing, I wonder? Or are you doing something else now? I'd love to know. Do let us know. Give us, send us in a message and let me know. All right. Happy birthday to you. And uh, Dave Speller is 36 years old today. So happy birthday to you all, gang. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Or well, what there is left of it, because it's a bit late now, isn't it, hey? Well, I'm going to go and do my dinner now. I've got, I'm going to do uh, 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 a, a vegetable risotto. So it takes me an hour about to do, around about an hour to do that, so I shall enjoy that. Uh, thank you, Judy, for your kind comments, and I shall disappear now. Thank you very much for uh, watching the show today, boys and girls. Uh, I'm hoping to be back with you again probably sometime tomorrow morning. I reckon tomorrow morning, sort of around 10, 11 o'clock, something like that, hopefully uh, tomorrow. We'll have another little chat then. Apart from that, enjoy the rest of your uh, evening, and if you're very quick, you'll catch the rest of Holby. See you again very soon. Bye-bye now.